Night Workers by Louise Doughty, with Harry Myers as Roy, Daniel O'Grady as Dave, and Robert Harper as Edward. turned off, right? Mm. And they've got lanterns like us, except they hang them up to do the work. And there's about six of them. It's messy, the mortar crumbles and gets everywhere. Just like when you're taking plaster off the walls at home. So they have to put tarpaulin across the mouth of the tunnel to stop all the dust going all over the platform. Otherwise the cleaning manager goes ballistic. I think I got out, mate. Oh yeah, mate. Cheers. We halfway, do you reckon? Well, it's this thick but almost see-through stuff, you know, misty coloured. Oh, yeah. And all the guys are working away, and suddenly they hear this rumble and look up. And through the plastic they see the headlights of a train coming right out. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> the bastards. You'll never guess yeah. what they did. They got one of the trolleys, you know, where you push the handle up and yeah, down. Yeah. They got one of the trolleys, the other team, and stuck two lanterns on the front. <laughs> took it to the far end of the platform and pushed it really hard down the platform until it picked up <laughs> momentum. <laughs> hell. All the other blokes doing the maintenance could see through the tarpaulin <laughs> was this train head inside. <laughs> 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 uh, <sighs> hey, shouldn't we be getting along? The thing that tickles me is... Uh, they must have known, logically, they must have known that the power was off so there couldn't possibly be a train... I well, suppose you don't use the logical bit of your head when something like that happens. You just dive for it. Hang on. Not sure I'd have seen that funny side. I just want to check something. I mean, that's the bit that freaks me out. Say some joker at the other end decides to turn on the power without telling us. The English, you know. Everyone back home thinks you're a stiff bunch of bastards, but I'll tell you, back home somebody makes a joke, you all laugh, it's finished. Over here, you're walking down the street and all of a sudden somebody drops a bucket of white paint on your head and it's some bloke up a ladder you went to school with 15 years ago and put a frog down his jumper in the science class. A pom never forgets. Too much history, that's what's wrong with this country, you know. Maybe we don't have enough, but you've got so much you've run out of storage. Here, Dave, come and have a look at this. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised this island doesn't sink. It's worse than Manhattan and they've got stacks of buildings. Come here. Look at this seepage. This is really bad. They haven't grouted round here for months. Unless the water's really bad round here. How can you tell? Look here. The fingers of water. You can tell it's bad when it's spreading. This is like a huge hand. I don't think it should be like this. What do you think? I think we should keep going. Come on. I think we should report it. Do you ever think about it? What? Well, the earth. The water. The weight. If I thought about it, I'd never come down. You can't think about it. You go bananas. All those people who get in the tube every day, do you think they think about it? All that earth on top of them when they're stuck in the tunnel, when the train stops and all the lights go off. And you know everyone in the carriage is thinking the same thing. My mother always thought I was afraid of the dark. Come on. I used to sleepwalk, you know, when I was little. Here we go. Stopped for a while when I got to about 13. Then it started up again around 16 or 17. Not so frequent then. 
It was more than sleepwalking by then. Roy, would you mind? Can we carry on? I'd like to get to the other end. One night, my mum told me, she woke up to the smell of burning about four in the morning. She checked my room first. She always did when anything unusual happened in the night. And then she rushed downstairs. She found me standing in the kitchen in front of the cooker. I had the grill on. I was grilling her at. Hold your lamp up. Yeah, I was making my arm ache. What happened to the headlamps, anyway? I couldn't find any. They always go. It's because we don't count as maintenance. Strictly speaking, we're security. Yeah, that's a laugh. Well, someone's got to do it. There's a lot of nutters about, you know. No kidding. So, uh, did you make a habit of cooking your mother's clothing? Oh, no, the hat was a one-off. Mostly, I used to get up and climb around the house. She used to get up in the morning and have to start looking for me. Under tables, in cupboards, under the sink. Once she found me curled up in a ball, stuck bollock naked in a cupboard on top of the display cabinet in the sitting room that had in all her china and her figurines. God knows how I got up there because I could never have done it when I was awake. She had to coax me down. My girlfriend talks in her sleep. She's English too. The other night she said, Can you make the layers a bit shorter? And then she was quiet for a few minutes. Then she said, Mayonnaise. <laughs> You do permanent nights? Yep. Jeez. Down here every night, eh? Mm hmm. Money's not that good. I'm only doing this because what's his name's off sick and Bob knew I'd done a bit of mining. One hole's as dark as any other, he said, which isn't true, Axel. Did you uh, go to the doctor's? Psychiatrist. I wouldn't leave the house during the day. I got scared in the daylight. He asked me if I ever had panic attacks in supermarkets, and I said, actually, I quite like supermarkets. He seemed disappointed. Um, what do you say if you meet a girl in a pub, for instance? What? A girl, you know. And she says, what do you do? Do you say I walk down tunnels all night under the Thames all night long, every night with a paraffin lamp and another bloke looking for explosive devices? Well, what do you say? I say I'm a big friendly Aussie and I'm only over here until my permit runs out, so let's make the most of the good times. I thought you said you had a girlfriend. Oh, please. I never go to pubs anyway. I don't do breakfast. I did meet a girl once. What? Listen. Did you hear that? What? Maybe it's a rat. Oh, bloody big rat would be the size of a wallaby. Cover your lamp. Dave, just cover it. Hey, there, you there! 
Yeah. Is there someone there? Lift your lamp up. Hey! We can't see anyone. We didn't imagine it. Well, what should we do? Come on. Let's take a look. Some bastard mucking about isn't going to scare me. There's no one here. No one. Do you want to go back? I don't understand. I mean, we'd have heard them if they ran. Do you want to go back? We're nearer this end than that. Come on. Let's get bloody well out of here and report it. I ain't doing this bloody job again. Way too weird for me. Hey, uh, hey tell me about that, uh, that girl you met, yeah? I can't remember. It's gone. Well, tell me about the psychiatrist. Not much to tell. They couldn't diagnose me. They said there wasn't a word for it. Said there's words for when you hate something, like claustrophobia, but there's no word for liking it. For liking closed up things and dark spaces. One of them suggested progressive derealisation. Mm. My mum went bananas. There's nothing progressive about it, she said to him. It's a pain in the ass. How's he ever going to get a proper job? Roy, take a look at this. That's bad. Even for down here, that's bad. That must be what? Two? Three inches? It's over the soles of me boots. Roy, this isn't right. It's the grouting, I told you. They haven't pressure grouted the fingers of water we saw back there. You don't get this much leakage from grouting. But look at it, it's a great long puddle. Dave. Dave, I don't know quite how to put this. I, uh, I think we've taken the wrong turn. No, it, it is no turn. We're in a tunnel. It was just... I'm sorry, but I know these tunnels really well. And... Well, I don't know this one. These walls, these supports. It's dark, okay? It's always been dark. Now, listen to me. I'm telling you. I've been up and down this line umpteen times. I've never been here. Well, they've got a wood face here for a start. It's brand new. Oh, stop it. I'm telling you, look, I know what I'm talking about. I'm a main citizen. Stop it! That's it. We're going back. Well, aren't you interested? No, I bloody will not. I'm going back. There it is again. Oh, your lamp. Huh? Just shut up, just shut up. Listen. What? Listen. There's nothing. Look, Dave, I'm... and they miss the last tube and they just decide to walk along the tunnel. They walk home all the way. Oh, he doesn't look drunk to me. Who are you? Hey? Are you lost? Please. 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 I never meant to be away. I my friends. I am a flesh, not a stone. You must see that. I'm not sinful. I am weak. Ever since you took my good mother, I've done my best. Truly, I've tried to reform. What the hell's he on about? Are you my guides? What are we going to do with it? 
He's off his chump. You ever seen a set of whiskers like that? Forgive me. Forgive me. I must seem so small and trembling. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of my fear. We'll uh, have to get him out of here. What's your name? Edward Parsons, sir. How old are you, Edward? Twenty-four. Thank you, Edward. Can I ask you to go and stand over by that wall while I talk to my friend? Huh? Here, you can hold this lamp. We've broken the other one. You gave us a bit of a fright. Yes, sir. What's with the questions? He's frightened, can't you see? So what? I'm not exactly chipper. Babe, I don't know how to put this. I don't know where you stand on these things. Who do you think he is? Well, I don't know, but he's got a rude loose in the top paddock. Look at his clothes. When was the last time you saw anyone dressed like that? And the way he speaks. The thing is, he seemed solid. I touched him. He was warm. Ah. Uh, uh, no. No way, mate. I'm not having that. Listen That's a me. load of absolute... Listen! We don't have any choice. That's what I'm always having to explain to people and they never understand. Go up, Roy. Pull yourself together, Roy. Mm -hmm. But things happen to you that you can't control. Mm -hmm. All you can do is try and be brave and work out what's going on. And now it's happened to us down here. No. No way. You may be not me. You may be crazy, but I'm not. Come on. Edward, what are you doing? I was praying, sir. <laughs> You lent them. We've got a couple more questions. Thanks. Why were you praying? To save my soul, sir. Oh, you don't need to call me sir. And for my wife, Anne. And my children, Harriet. And William. And for the Queen and for the Empire. I thought as much. What? Edward. When were you born? Oh, you still haven't convinced me, you slimy little weirdo. You're as bad as he is. I tell you. Edward! Me. Your date of birth? 28th of September. Yes. The year of our Lord, 1866. No. No! No way! Ow! He's some pissed up little bastard who's got lost in the tunnel, that's all it is. You're leaving, please. No, he's real. He's as real as we are. I'm feeling me. Oh, he's real. I know he is. I never said he wasn't. You, you think he's a ghost and he's bloody well not. He's a fella, solid as anything. Uh, he isn't a ghost. I never said he was. Here, take the lantern. Hold it up. Look, Dave. Just look. I told you, this tunnel is brand new. But this tunnel was built a century ago, but it's new. New walls, new supports. And look at the ground. Those puddles of water, they haven't got round to sorting out the drainage yet. It's us, Dave. We're the ghosts. Oh, jeez. Edward... Can't... You thought we were ghosts, didn't you? Not exactly, sir. What then? And there are stories. From the very beginning there were stories. I, I thought you were... spirits. They say that all of the men who have died have seen spirits. And spirits don't wear orange polyester jumpsuits and carry paraffin lamps. No, you... Point it out, sir. Your gob is not quite what one might have expected. Look, what do you mean the men who've died? Hey, who's died? Well, there's been nine, nine workers. Well, this is the first tunnel underneath the Thames, the City and South London Railway. Cost has been much greater than they thought. Nine and a half a million pounds, in fact. The Times newspaper has called it the Great Bore. The construction's taken 14 years. How have they died? Differently, sir. There have been nine in all. The first few deaths were when machinery fell. And then there was a flood and drowning. Men are frightened. All this weight above us. The water of the Thames. 
They say the tunnel never old. They say that just before the accidents, men see the spirits walking down the tunnel. Two men holding lanterns. They say they hold the spirits deep in the earth. Come and look for souls. And they say... They... When I saw you, I wondered if maybe I'd died. But I don't remember dying. I was on night watch. I saw some large puddles. Larger than the night before. And I followed them, investigate. Then my lantern went out. I became disorientated. I heard your voices and thought perhaps they'd sent down other watchmen to look for me. Then I saw your lights. Two lights. We have to come down in twos in case someone has a coronary or something. A coronary? You know, when your heart stops. Roy, what are we going to do? Well, I know what I'd like to do. I'd like to ask him questions. I'd like to know about his life. I mean, just imagine to find out everything he knows. Yeah, Roy, I just want to get out of here, okay? Well, I suppose... Well, I don't know. We'll just have to try going back. Back the way we've come. Uh, come on, Edward. I, I don't think you're dead. Not yet. This way, but... Come on. You'll be all right with us. Oh, I cannot believe it. Truly. It is hard for me to imagine. A loaf of bread is, well, depending on whether it's small or large, 80, oh. 90 pence. Depends on whether you go to the supermarket or the corner shop. I... All the corners in London have shops these days. And they didn't for a bit, now they do again. And what are... Oh, supermarkets. Mm. Supermarkets are huge warehouses with lights so bright they hurt the inside of your head. You can get anything you want there, but as you're leaving you have to hand over your sanity. If you've got a car, Sorry. a sort of carriage, you have to park it in one of the rows outside. And just as you're opening the door, somebody who wants your money comes and bashes you over the head with a baseball bat. <sighs> baseball is like cricket, but they just go round and round until they can't stand it anymore. You are most well informed about earthly matters. Part of the job description, buddy. Huh. Soon, there won't be any supermarkets anymore. Huh. Now we have computers, uh, like televisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't even have radios, do you? Mm. No, sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 my fault. It, if a lion could speak, we would not understand what it would say. What? It's something I've read somewhere. How can I put it? There'll be no supermarkets because of the boxes that everybody has in their sitting room. If you want tins of beans or bread or a new saucepan, soon you'll just tinker with the box a bit and a man will bring everything to the front door. So you won't get your head bashed in? <laughs> that will be an improvement, surely? Well, yeah, but there's a catch. You have to tell the box your secret number. Mm -hmm. And other people can then look in their boxes and see your secret number. All, all the boxes will be connected up, you see, by great long wires that go from house to house. Uh, yeah. Once somebody's got your number, they can do all sorts of things to you without you knowing it. They can order pizzas and make you pay for them, or tell the government to start a nuclear war. Um, a nuclear war is the worst sort of war you can have, with huge bombs that kill most people and leave a sickness behind to kill anyone that's left over. For ages, we all thought there was going to be one any minute. At the moment, there are other things that everyone is more worried about. But the huge bombs are still there. They keep them in holes in the ground, just in case they decide they want to have that sort of war after all. I'm greatly saddened to hear there are still wars. One would have thought they would be amongst the first things to have been eradicated. Dream on, brother. We've had two big ones, which were awful. Everybody got killed. 
Now there are lots of little ones, and in England we don't worry about them because we think they're just little, which is terrible, really, because if you put them all together, then they're probably just as bad as the big ones. But lots of things have got better. There are medicines that can make almost anything better. They can even make you better when you didn't know there was anything wrong with you, like in your head. There have been lots of things wrong with my head, and in your day, I think they'd have just locked me up in a big stone house. But since then, we've had Freud. Freud is a medicine? No, 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 he was a man with a beard. who said if you lie on a settee and talk for a long time, all your problems turn into a sore throat. Then they open the window and give you a pill, and the sore throat grows wings and flies away. Roy, what in the name of God are you talking about? If a lion could speak, then we would not understand what it would say. But I've remembered who said it. Mm -hmm. He used to be an engineer, but then he became dead clever. I remember reading that on the back of one of his books. Cheered me up, that did. I thought, there's hope. Gentlemen, uh, we must almost be there by now. Uh, no, no, there's a way to go yet. Oh. Come on. Harriet is seven years old. William is still a baby. I have hopes for him. Do you have families? No. No, me either. You're both bachelors? Well, I live with my mother. I see a widow. Not exactly. My father left home when I was small. My mum brought up me and my brother. You never mentioned you had a brother? We don't get on. I must say, it is most unusual for two gentlemen such as yourselves to be unmarried. Nowadays, it's quite normal. People write books about how normal it is. But surely, uh, a man is hardly a man until he is wed. It is a sign that you have moved from boyhood. That and having a trade. Although I must say, there are many ways in which I did not feel truly a man until my son was born. <laughs> oh, my son. Do you know the first thing I noticed about him? He has my ears. <laughs> Men in my family all have rather large ears. I wept with joy when I saw that. What a shame to say so. I wept with joy. What's the matter, Edward? There are some emotions for which words cannot suffice. Love, wonder. I feel like your engineer's lion sometimes. I speak, but it is as if I cannot comprehend what I am saying. I felt like that when I first came down here, on the very first day of my new job. I've been unemployed for some time. I was so grateful to have gainful employment again that I had scarcely contemplated the nature of my duties. The very first night, I was left alone. And only then did I begin to think. It's an astounding thing, this tunnel. Do you not think? Yeah. The first night I had to stop, just like this, and gaze upwards in disbelief. What a time to be alive. Things man can achieve. This tiny space of air supporting buildings. Palaces, royalty, my family, roads, trams, banks. Factories, chimneys, the whole of the slowly turning sleeping world. The men have performed this. Ordinary men. Oh, oh, now you see, this is why I said earlier. Oh, heavens. Oh, God, I didn't uh, expect. Uh, I uh, thought you knew. I uh, assumed that. Oh, we've reached the end of the tunnel, gentlemen. No, it, it is not yet finished. No way. There is nothing this way but earth. No, no, this isn't happening. It can't. I didn't know why you wanted to come this way. No, I, no, I we thought... didn't know, Edward. We thought we could go back. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. I really don't know. We'll have to go back the other way. I don't know whether we can. He can. We can't. Why not? Edward, what's back that way? Back down the tunnel? Back there? London, of course. The city. 
Blackfriars, King William Street. Where do you live? Not far from Brick Lane. How'd you get home? A walk. Or get the tram. See, Dave? That's what's out there. London. Victorian London. Edward, yeah. you should go. There's no reason for you to stay with us. You can't help. I can just go back. I'm not dead. No, you're not dead. Oh, I'm a wife. I love my wife so much. Oh, she's young. She was so ill after giving birth to our son. And when I thought I died, I thought of how she would manage alone. I thought of how my son would grow up, never being able to feel my arms or know what my voice sounded like. I'll be lost to him forever. Go now. Uh, well, uh, goodbye then. Whatever you are, I have been kind. Goodbye. My brother was like my dad. I was more like my mum. My brother was the son my dad had wanted, I reckon. Good at things. I was an afterthought. My mum wanted me. I think she wanted a little girl. She told me once they were going to call her Joy. It wasn't that he hit me or beat me up. No, my brother was too clever for that. He would have caught hell off our mum. He just let me know that he could do it any time he wanted. The night before I went to secondary school, he came to my bedroom. It was late. I couldn't sleep. I was in my pyjamas and I got out my pencil case and laid out my pencils and my ruler and my pencil sharpener across the floor, just looking at them. They were new. I looked up and there was my brother standing in the doorway. I thought they'd all gone to bed. He told me that he'd told everybody at secondary school what I was like. He'd warned them all. But when I got there the next day, I wouldn't make any friends. And no one would like me because he'd told them all what I was like. My dad had left five years before. My brother said it was because of me. Because he was sick of having a son like me and he couldn't stand it anymore. I remember the first day he said it. We were driving over to Bristol to see our aunt and uncle. I must have been six or seven. He was twelve. Dad had left a week ago and... Mum still hadn't talked about it. Just cried a lot in the bathroom, you know. She drove us over. My brother in the front seat and me in the back. Just before we got to Bristol, my brother starts saying how he wants the toilet. So my mum pulls up in a lay-by and he gets out. She made me go with him. 
said I'd only want it half a mile down the road. We climbed over a hedge and into a field. It was spring, early spring. Nice day, fresh breeze, the sky a huge white arc above us stretching up so far you couldn't imagine how far it was. And this empty field of old grass, trees in the distance. As my brother was doing up his trousers, he turned to me and said, It's your fault Dad left, you know. Then he said, One day I'm going to kill you. And he went back to the car. I didn't know what to do. I looked up at the sky. Back home in Oz, the sky's huge. So huge you can't believe it ever stops wrapping itself around the world. But at the same time it seems really close. As if you could reach up your arm and sink your hand in up to the elbow. It's as if it was this great soft mass like a doona or something like well, water. Except now, of course, you can't stare upwards anymore. It's too dangerous. My girlfriend said to me, that's the difference between there and here. At home, there's all sorts of things that are dangerous. There are deadly spiders and, and snakes and heat and so on, but well, they're, they're sort of natural too, so you, you kind of get used to the idea that something natural can kill you. You have respect. Whereas over here, nothing natural's going to get you, it just doesn't happen. I mean, if something's going to get you, it'll be like a car accident or a serial killer or a roof caving in. It's all wrong. But somehow that makes you more frightened, more timid. You don't like the dark. Hey, we fellas who live underground, miners, out in places like Cuba Pedy, they have dugouts, homes in the ground. It can get up to 117 degrees up there. We well, couldn't live in it, not white fellas anyhow, but Man, they've got whole towns underground for the miners. Houses, shops, even a chapel. But inside, the houses are just done up like anything. Plastic roses in vases and curtains. And... You've been a miner? No, oh, no, no, no. Well, not big mining, not coal mining or anything. Opal mining. Bottom's dropped out of that market now. It used to be huge in the 60s and 70s. I was born out there before my folks moved to Adelaide. My father and my uncle had a claim together. Two men could lay a claim and dig their own shaft. You never knew what you might come up with. You didn't have to go that deep, mind. You'd dig your own shaft, one man on the bucket. Now it's mostly tourism. My uncle works at the Opal Mining Museum. <laughs> you believe it? He used to do it only 20 years back, now he's in the museum. We all used to go up there when I was a kid. Do a bit of noodling, they call it. Once the country's been rushed, you get these great heaps of mullock. The trees and the grass, they just vanish. You get these great white heaps which reflect the sun so you can hardly look at them. And you'd all get down on your haunches, the whole family, and you'd noodle for a bit of colour. Mostly just potch is what you'd come up with. But sometimes you'd find a little something from when an old-timer had sunk a shaft and given up his claim. Opal. It's the most beautiful thing in the whole world. It's as beautiful as Australia and with the whole of Australia in it. More besides. Black opal. That's the most valuable set. Well, it isn't black, of course. It's every colour. Atlas colours, like a globe. The bright turquoise of the ocean. The bright green and yellow and pink and misty pink too, but somehow even the cloudy colour seems true as all the rest. The whole of the slowly turning world, like Edward said, 
all in one stone. A valuable opal, you can turn it in a full circle and see the colours from every angle. That's how you can tell it's the best kind. Fellas, they can't bear to part with those stones sometimes. Even though they could quit mining for good if they sold them, they get so attached. That's when I first knew I wanted to travel. I turned a true opal in my uncle's dugout. Promised me the world. The colours. The light. I'm sorry, Roy. I've got to take my chances. Mate, I'm sorry. I oh, know. It's okay. You reckon Edward made it? Well, I don't know. He didn't seem to feel the cold down here, did you notice? I mean, it's really cold and he didn't even feel it. That makes me think a bit. And there are some things he didn't know. Like what? Well, the tunnel took 15 years to complete for a start. We did a project at school. And it wasn't nine men that died. It was ten. Poor bastard. Here. Take the lamp. Are you sure? You're going to need it more than me. Well, what'll happen to you? I don't know. I wish I knew what was out there. Hey, how do you reckon an Aussie's going to get on in Victorian London? <laughs> when did the opal trade start? Oh, I'm not sure. Beginning of the century. Well, sorry. Beginning of next. It's a long boat ride. Hey, it's got to be a lot better than Qantas. <laughs> Bye, Dave. Bye, Roy. Good luck, mate. When I got back to the car, my mother said, Where were you? Thinking, I said. My brother said, he's always thinking. It was around then I started sleepwalking. I did it that night at my auntie's house. My mother thought I was afraid of the dark, but it was never the dark I was afraid of. I loved the dark. I was afraid of loving it. In Night Workers by Louise Doughty, Roy was played by Harry Myers, Edward by Robert Harper, and Daniel O'Grady was Dave. Night Workers was directed by Gillian Barry. <laughs>